welcome to another episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. This is episode 134 and if I'm wrong about that we'll put the correct number there. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. If you are a returning viewer and customer of the Wooly Thistle, thank you so much for um, joining me for another uh, blether session of all the Wooly things. I'm excited, I've got lots to tell you. And if you're a new visitor, thanks so much for checking us out. I think YouTube has been sending more people uh, this way. And if that's how you got here, or no matter how you got here, actually, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope I can keep your interest. <laughs> I have lots of lovely things to show you. Um, so yeah, just thanks for coming along. And uh, if you're on Facebook, do join our Facebook group, which is a lovely small group right now, though it is growing. Uh, it's a very lovely place to hang out, so you can do that by going to Facebook and searching for the Wooly Thistle group. We have a Ravelry group that's very established and a, um, full of wonderful people, and we usually host our cows there. Um, and of course, sign up for our newsletter, which is uh, on the shop website. And if you need to get in touch with us for anything at all, just email us at info at thewoollythistle.com. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Instagram. We're on Instagram as the Wooly Thistle. And of course, two L's in Wooly every time we spell it the British way here. I'm Corinne. I am the owner and founder of the Wooly Thistle. Um, the Wooly Thistle is now four and a half years old, or actually will be five years old this year. So we, we're, we will be having celebrations probably around July because that's when we started this little shop. Um, so that's exciting. But right off the bat, it's been a couple of weeks or actually nearer a month since we last spoke because of the holidays. So uh, we will be back on our every other week schedule now, which is really great. And I should tell you right away what I'm wearing. Uh, if you watched the last episode, you will know that this is the Porty pullover that turned into a dress. Here we go and i will talk lots about it later um i had so many great con um i had so many great um suggestions for dealing with my problems <laughs> that were my own making um and i want to share with you what i did and uh you know what happened so thank you so much for all your comments that were very helpful and very um made me think about lots of things that I wouldn't have thought about on my own. So we'll talk about that, but I wanted to get this out there that I am wearing my Porty pullover as a dress and I love it. I really do enjoy it. It's very comfortable, but we'll talk all about that soon. And I should also tell you right now who the winner is from the last episode. Um, this is a winner that is picked at random for a $25 gift certificate to the Wooly Thistle. We do that pretty much every episode. And, uh, all you have to do is leave a comment, give us two thumbs up and, or just one thumb up actually, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So the winner picked at random this time is Hannah P. And she said, I can't wait to knit the Star Cardi, which is this lovely article here. I have always loved that sweater of yours. As far as Gage goes, your story made me cringe. <laughs> I think I made everybody cringe. Thinking about all of the enormous sweaters I have knit over the years. It took me a long time to realize that Evil Gage is actually your best friend. Uh, and I still forget, so I guess I'll be checking the gauge for the Cardi she's working on right now. <laughs> that is so true. Uh, so on hitting the nail on the head there because my whole problem with this sweater was gauge. Otherwise, it's a great fun knit. Uh, but we'll talk about that. In fact, we could talk about that right now, couldn't we? Because I don't, this is my current FO, though it's been an FO for a little while, but because of the holidays, you haven't seen it. I think I actually forgot to bring it um, for the last shop update too. So this is my FO and it is the Porty Pullover by Gudrun Johnson. It's a lovely color work uh, yoke. And I did mine in, uh, well, it's knitted, it's, it's uh, written for Jameson and Smith. And of course I did mine in Jameson and Smith two ply, which has just bloomed up really, really prettily. Let me just, you know, it's just, I don't know if you can tell, but it feels and it looks kind of fluffy, very soft, very cozy and lovely. And I went with lots of greens for my yoke. I think there's only three or four contrast colors. Um, and 
I did that subconsciously and then realized that I'm knitting very much in thistle colors. So my whole life revolves around the woolly thistle <laughs> and even my knitting color choice. But I think it worked out quite well and I like, I like how it looks. So I did find around the shoulders. This is a cardigan with quite a bit of positive ease built in. So it's a relaxed fit anyway. And uh, I think I was fine with the gauge here. And then I just started knitting the body shaping. And by the time I tried it on when it was, you know, down here as it should be, um, it felt really gigantic. And I think that for me, I hadn't blocked it yet. And this here was all poofing out a long, long, long way. And it still does actually. There's a lot of fabric in this. The gauge the pattern calls for is 24 stitches no, 27 stitches over four inches. I was knitting at 24 inches. No, 24 stitches over four inches. But I, did I check my gauge? Nope, I did not. And I should know better. I really should know better. But I think I was just, in, I loved knitting the color work and then it was like, oh my God, this is almost done. Zoom down the body. So when I tried it on eventually, when it was almost fully done, I realized that it looked gigantic. Now, what I should have done right then and there was block it. And I didn't block it. I just got all like, ooh, it's not gonna fit, it's really big, I don't like it, oh. And I thought, well, what can I do? I can rip it out, obviously, and just knit it again, which would have been a good thing to do. Um, and, and then I thought, well, I'll just keep knitting it and make it a nice A-line dress. And I'll be sort of a tunic that you can just throw over leggings. So that is what I have. And I kept the sleeves short um, so that, you know, I can wear it over things. Um, it's very lightweight. <clears throat> and I didn't have to knit sleeves as well as a long body. And it didn't take long to just keep knitting uh, to the right length that I wanted. But still, it looked gigantic. <laughs> that didn't help anything, just knitting more of a, you know, knitting more of a big thing is not going to make it look better, unfortunately. Um, and that was the point I was at when I came on to the shopcast last time and told you that, oh my God, maybe I can felt it and make it just the perfect size. I knew that that was ridiculous and not a good plan, but I think I was really uh, panicked <laughs> and struggling. Um, and so we had loads and loads of comments, um, a lot of steaking, uh, suggesting I steak down the sides and then cut out the excess. That was a good plan. Um, a lot of people uh, thought that I should knit, <clears throat> like pick up stitches on the sides and knit little ties and then you can pull it back and tie it in a knot. Uh, lots of people thought I should stick it right down the middle and make it into a nice big duster or cardigan. These are all really, really great uh, suggestions. But what I did first was I blocked it. <laughs> And I think it actually looks a ton better now that it's been blocked. Um, I think that is honestly the truth. So that is all I did was block it. Talk about a storm in a teacup. However, I still think it's pretty big. And I, what I want to do is I'm going to pick up some stitches, I think, create ties so that I can adjust how tight or loose and drapey it is. Um, and that'll give me some shaping, I think. So. I thought I would do that. That's what I was going to do while I was waiting for it to dry, was I was gonna pick up the stitches and maybe do little I-cord um, ties, which I think would be really nice. Um, and I was going to do that first because if that didn't work or I didn't like it, then I could stick it. Um, so I, wa I wanted to go with the, le the least invasive method first. And actually the very most least invasive method is to block the thing before you start panicking. So let that be a word to the wise Blocking is magic. We all know that. We've all heard that a million times. I, I include myself in that. Blocking is always needed. I actually even have a sweater that I knit. Um, it was a Marie Wallen sweater. I knitted it. It was finished. I tried it on. I absolutely, I thought it looked the worst thing ever on me and I was never going to wear it. And I was complaining about that. <laughs> and then I uh, blocked it, tried it on, and it was so much better. So if you've ever had a question about whether you should block something, and I suppose for the newbies, let me tell you what blocking is. I'm talking like we all know, and I'm sure many of us do, but if you don't, blocking is when you take your finished garment and you put it 
in a bath of warm water. Um, I don't even put any soap or anything, but you can, if you want to, you can put a little bit of dishwashing soap in there. Don't mix it up like this and get all bubbly. You just squirt it in a little bit, let it fall to the bottom. That's all you do. Or you can put vinegar in, especially if you're using um, a yarn that is scratchy, say, and you want it to soften up. You can put a little bit of vinegar in the water. You can obviously use wool washes like Eucalan and things like that. And um, yeah, but I don't, I just, I just get, and actually my water is usually pretty hot because all you're gonna do is what, you run the water into a basin, a nice big basin, and you know, you, your water can be hot or warm because all you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the piece down and and sort of push it down and then let it do the rest over time, which is to sink down into the water and absorb all the water. Sometimes you'll see color coming out, um, not color from the dye. Um, my yarns here that we sell tend not to ever bleed, although I think Tuku's strong colors might bleed sometimes. I have heard that happen. But um, you might see like a milky white or you might see even, you know, what looks like, um, you know, just milky brown and it could just be that this yarn is so minimally processed that you're actually getting some of the field <laughs> out with uh, that first washing. Um, that's okay. Uh, I That does not bother me one bit. That makes me feel so much closer to the place that it came from. Um, so anyway, so you just let it soak and you let it soak for a minimum say of 20 minutes. I have left things there overnight. I mean, it's not going to do any harm and the water cools off. The important thing is that you don't agitate what you put in there. So you put it in, you push it down a little bit, and then you just let it soak over however long you let it sit there. And it absorbs all the water, well, some of the water, but the, the wool takes on the water and it gets really heavy, obviously. And then you come along later and you empty out the water by holding your garment and tipping out that. I do it in the bath. I pretty much have a big flat, plastic tub and I put my stuff in, put my hot water in, then I put my stuff in and I don't crowd that, you know, you want to have lots of space for it to spread out and do its thing. But then, you know, when it's time to tip it out, you're in the bath or, you know, you're doing it in the bath and it doesn't matter if it gets messy. And then what I typically do and caution because, you know, you got to make sure you have a washing machine that does this the way I'm going to describe but I have a washing machine that will do a spin cycle without adding any water. If your spin cycle includes adding water, don't do this. Because uh, if you're adding water while it's moving, that will cause felting and you don't want that. I mean, most, if not all, or some of the yarns we sell here are, well, they're all such woolly wools that, you know, they'll be more prone to wanting to felt than something that's made out of superwash, obviously. So if you can spin your item without adding water, then go ahead and put it in the washing machine, set your spin cycle. And then I tend to, I know exactly when to stop mine. I can go for nine minutes in the spin cycle and it's almost, you know, it's all wrung out. Um, but you might wanna check every minute or so, um, stop and look. And you basically are spinning the excess water out so that it'll be quicker to dry. You don't need to do this. If you don't want to use your washing machine to spin it out, then um, when you tip it out into the bath, the water that is, you're still holding onto the garment. Don't let the garment fall in the bath. But you're going to um, try and keep just letting the water pour out of it without letting the garment fall and stretch. So you're holding quite a lot of the garment up in your hand and uh, you're just letting that water pour out. And then you can squeeze it if you're very careful, but never wring it obviously, because that will uh, cause agitation and will change your wool forever. Uh, and you don't want that. So then, um, sorry, that's a very long comment. Very, this is a very long explanation. I didn't mean this, but you know, hopefully it's of use. But anyway, so then you know, you've got your wet piece that you've got all the water out that you can get out manually, and you're going to get lots of towels. Lay it down nice and flat on the towels, roll the towel up, and then step on it. And you can dance on it, and you can, you know, get the kids to jump up and down on it, even. Um, so you that's a good way to get all of the water out. You're sort of it's all safely not moving around because it's it's wound up in lots of towels but you step on it 
get all the water out and then lay a clean dry towel out lay your piece out measure it so that it's the correct dimensions that you want um, so that you're not overstretching or anything and let it dry and it'll dry faster if you've rung it in the if you spun it not rung it <laughs> if you spun it in the washing machine because it'll be more dry when it comes out of there just be careful when you're when you're lifting wet woolies you always want to really support all of it and not let bits hang off and you know do dangle because they'll stretch and you don't want that you can't it's very difficult to unstretch something um so anyway where was i that's how you block and that's what blocking is um and so yes it's the least evasive thing or at least invasive thing you can do and it's also absolutely essential for any piece that you are finishing it's part of the creating of the the piece because um, it changes it so much so where i had huge billowing um like almost bubbles of yarn you know billowing out here now it's flat you know it's much more um an acceptable shape to me um and this is something that i will enjoy wearing um it's not what i intended it to be i wanted it to be a sweater and i could obviously always cut it and just you know re-knit it if i want but I might, i'm going to test out how i like wearing a sweater dress um i'll be interested to see how you know where i'm sitting uh lasts and you know just how many wears i can get out of it before i need to wash it and that sort of thing um, and that's a whole other discussion is washing your knits and how often you should wash your knits. I think most, if, uh, I think some of us here will be um, experienced enough knitters to understand that you don't need to wash your knits every time you wear them. In fact, that is not a good plan and we can talk about that another time. So this is my party pullover. Thank you, Gudrun Johnson, for a lovely pattern. Sorry, I... <laughs> I didn't pay attention to my gauge otherwise I'd be showing you the perfect as written party pullover but all that to say I'm very happy with it I love the color work this is uh, quite Bauhaus I don't know how you say that properly but it makes me think of Bauhaus which is um, I think Danish color work yokes that um, are knitted with mohair as well and have a very sort of close small motif and this this sort of uh, makes me think of that a little bit but yeah, Jameson and Smith to apply rocks. I love that, uh, that yarn. And unfortunately, talking of Jameson and Smith, they are having some supply chain issues. But as soon as we can get all of our stock back in, we will. We do have orders in with them and we're just waiting for them to be able to send us everything over from Shetland. So, you know, if you can be at all patient about that that's very much appreciated um we will have the the star cardi kits coming uh as soon as we get the yarn for this this is by donna k designs and she designed the original of this for me which was a lovely lovely treat and very lovely of her um, I knitted this in Jameson and Smith two ply. It is 27 and 81. You've all seen it before. And then she wrote up the pattern and this is the sample that she created here. This is in blues, FC 61 and 36, I believe off the top of my head. She's got lovely details running down the sleeve and the side, um, just beautiful. Um, we need to find out about these buttons, don't we? So this is um, going to be a kit that we have here at the Woolly Thistle just as soon as we are, just as soon as we are able to source the yarn. But, you know, our orders are in. It'll happen as soon as it happens. Uh, we have to be patient in these COVID, di COVID days, which are still with us, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, I just got off on a huge ramble. How are you? I hope you're well and I hope you know that you know uh, 2021 is going to be a great year of relief and um, you know getting back to normal but it does not seem that way yet um, this week uh, the weekend that I'm recording is right after the capital storming and that's weighing really heavy on my mind and what this all means and just how this could happen and so I'm sure it's on your mind too. And it's really, it was really a bummer to have that happen uh, right at the beginning of this year. But 
as always, I turn to my knitting um, as an escape, but but more sort of as my own therapy. I I knit my heart out, and with each stitch, I'm pouring in a lot of. I'm just working things out in my head how I feel about things and so much of 2020 and into 21 has been external factors um, hitting us you know it's not of our doing it, it's it's out there and but it's impacting all of us in so many different ways um, and you're probably the same where it's very uh, therapeutic to knit and you know just enjoy the motion of the knitting of the stitches it helps me deal with the difficulties that really are right up front in our lives right now so i hope the knitting does the same for you i think it does i think if you're here you really are a woolly wool lover <laughs> who um, really enjoys uh, mindless knitting as well as some beautiful color work and construction knitting um, you know we we have everything for everyone here uh, if you like woolly wool and that is what we're known for is um, yarns with a story yarns with provenance yarns that travel you know we have to be armchair travelers right now and that's what our, our wool um, it does that for me in some ways it takes me home when because I can't go home yet um, you know we're not flying in and out of the UK at all and so yeah, I, I can I can be home through my knitting because um, I know for a fact that the, that the rain blows sideways over there and that sheep sort of stand facing into the wind for some reason and um, that's just what they do and they, they're everywhere, especially up north in the northwest and up in Shetland. Um, I grew up with sheep everywhere around, didn't bat an eyelid at it, that was completely normal. Um, I would have loved to have thought more about the different breeds of sheep as I was a kid because they all looked a sheep is a sheep is a sheep but as we know that's not actually true because the wool they produce is um, quite different and the the size of sheep the environment that they thrive on is different um, even the meat they produce is different um, and then and then we can start thinking about you know crossbreeds of sheep and we can think about blending of different wools from different sheep so this is a wonderful rabbit hole that I fell down quite some time ago and thoroughly enjoy and it's there's no end to it like knitting there's no end to the learning that is there for the taking um, so yeah sheep and wool and knitting travel related to these places um, is all just wonderful and fascinating and endlessly interesting to me and I think probably to you as well. So all that to say, um, we can escape into our knitting and our research that we want to do. God, and I'm not even mentioning the spinning and all of that. That's a huge rabbit hole for people who want to construct their own yarns. And there's so many things to think about there like color, and type of spinning, you know, whether it's worsted or woolen spun, um, whether you're pinching little bits off or whether you're doing long draw, uh, whether you're uh, spinning with a giant wheel or hand, um, you know, drop spindling. I mean, God, there's so much to keep us occupied, which is lovely. All that though is to say is that it's, it's, it is an escape and it's a place that I go to sort of uh, work through my, re my responses and reactions to what's happening out there in the world. Um, but it doesn't mean I hide there. I certainly don't. I have no choice. I have to um, be aware of what's going on uh, politically and culturally in the world because my family is transracial and it affects me 100%. I really care about this stuff. So, um, so I don't escape to my knitting to never come out of it again, but I do use it to help me cope with fear or anxiety or um you know just worries that 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 this life is throwing at us right now more than ever it seems um so just know that you know your knitting is a wonderful place uh, it's a wonderfully supportive activity that doesn't hurt anyone at all but we want to be welcoming to um all knitters whether you're of color um, I hope that we also have yarns that 
have different price points for lots of variety um, in the yarns that you want to knit with so that you know any price point can can uh, shop at the Woolly Thistle and we're not just serving the upper echelons of the you know very expensive yarn set. We don't have a lot of that at all. We have some but there's good reason for it. It's traveled a long way. It's been um, carefully processed in small batches maybe by the farmer or by an independent mill and you know we want to support these small businesses and we do when you shop with the woolly thistle you are supporting lots of small businesses that um, depend on us knitting with their products oh, so yeah um 2021 i hope is going to be another great year for the woolly thistle thank you so much for just giving us I run for our money last year. We learned how to pivot and grow and um, really respond to uh, you guys and what you needed. And we hope that you found us to be there for you. You know, let me, let me tell you about the Knitting Buddies program that we've mentioned several times. Do you know that over 500 of you are have joined up and are in a Knitting Buddy group, which is phenomenal all by itself. But did you know that you span 46 states and 17 countries? All of you got in touch and said that you wanted a Knitting Buddy. And Maggie, uh, who is wonderful here at the shop, um, she has been matching people up in groups of four to six so that you can look after each other and not be isolated. That even if everything else around you is crazy and isolated, you have a group of knitters who are also looking for that contact through this very difficult time. And we, we have heard and we see on social media from time to time that you guys are having a great time. Whether you keep in touch through emails to each other and you check in on each other, or you have a weekly Zoom call, which I think is really um, a good way to go. Um, people are doing swaps and they're just keeping themselves together and occupied and you know trying to stay sane together and you're with people who love woolly wool so I'm um, I think that is the crowning glory of 2020 uh, for the woolly thistle is that we were able to get people together in a time of crisis and when um, actual isolation was a huge issue we were able to match people and that that program continues on it's completely free and if you are still interested in looking for a buddy uh, we still get people um, joining up so go put your name there you can go to a Ravelry group and find the knitting buddy thread you fill in the form and then you hear from us when we have enough people to fill a group um, so yeah uh, I'm very, very proud that the Woolly Thistle was able to accommodate and facilitate that um, in a time of need, and we are going to continue on with it. Of course, in 2020, we also donated quite a bit to charity, um, especially charities that um, benefit people of color um, over the summer. You know, it was really, really difficult. And so I'm really, and, and actually way back in January, a year ago now, uh, we had the fires in Australia and the World, World Wildlife Fund was needing support to relocate animals such as the koala and the kangaroo and the wallaby and all of that. And so we were able to take a portion of our sales profit and donate to that in January. And then we donated to Color of Change and also um, the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which supports kids of color and, and going to college and getting them the education uh, that they need. So thank you very much. The Woolly Thistle is so much more than a yarn shop. It is to me, obviously, much more than that is how I make my living now. You know, I think we just all pull together here. Um, my staff have been absolutely phenomenal. And as we uh, figured out how to get through 2020 and what we could do and how we're gonna do it, we were literally, it felt like we were on fire most of the time. And so for 2021, our big deal is to find systems and communication between um, different pieces of the puzzle. And that's what we're, we're focusing on as well as improving if we can, hopefully that's, um, that's, we don't need to do it too much, but we are focusing on improving customer service and we want you to feel very happy with your purchase from the Woolly Thistle and any contact you have with us. We want it to be positive. Um, I think we did that last year, but it was very, it was, it was hard work because we just had so much going on 
um, which was great. No complaints at all. It was fantastic. But we want to try and make it so that it's easier for us to give you the best service possible at all times, at every point of your journey. So that's what we're working on this year. Yes. I have no current um, other FOs except for this, but I do want to point out my current whip right now, which is uh, knitted in Rama Fennel Garn. Um, it's still attached to quite a bit of yarn. This is a Colorwork Cowl. Let's see if I can do this. And there we go. And so it is a color work motif that changes color on a background that changes color. And then halfway through, I reverse the motif and the background. So now it is uh, the light color is the motif and the dark color is the background. And it changes beautiful color all the way down there. So this is feeling very large um, and I think what I'm going to do is make it a little narrower um, I, I will be releasing this as a pattern actually as a kit and I think it's going to be more from here to here when it's finished I think that will be a more comfortable weight to wear uh, but my prototype here is really big and I don't know but I think wearing this, well, wearing this in a New England winter will be absolutely delightful. Uh, and it's sort of, yeah. So it will be, it will go around twice and it will be beautiful colors. The kit will have the colors that are here and let me tell you about the yarn. It is Rama Fennel Garn, which is my very favorite yarn other than Jameson and Smith. I think if I died or if I got marooned on a desert island, I would take Jameson and Smith and I would take Rama Fennel Garn. Um, both of these yarns, as you can see, are great at color work. And this has not been blocked yet. So, you know, forgive the, the wrinkles and bumps. I'm very sensitive right now to, to unblocked items. Um, what am I saying? Yeah, so these are my Desert Island yarns because, oh my gosh, I would love to wear this. This needs to be a garment, eh? Look at that. Whoa. Uh, oh, and you can see, so the, um, the motif here is dark and the motif here is light. So there's, there's quite a bit going on with color. Um, oh my gosh, this is so warm and lovely and snuggly. And of course, you... You're knitting in the round and what's so lovely about it is the inside of this will never be seen. It'll be all shut away so you don't need to catch floats. You don't need to worry about catching floats. There isn't really too many um, floats that you need to catch anyway but when they do show up you don't need to worry. I love this pop of color at the end um, and that it's nice and warm, but then we've got a nice cool bit here. And I, I think I'm gonna really love this. And this is really good having all the colors because when you're wearing makeup, <laughs> it's not gonna show because it's up close to you. Um, so it might get a wee bit of makeup on it, but it's not gonna show, it's not gonna, it's not like wearing a white or cream cowl, which I have and love. Yeah, so this is coming soon. I hope to have this released maybe in the next week or two, um, definitely by the end of January. Um, this will be available as a kit with the yarn you need and the pattern. Very exciting and very in love with that. I basically knitted that right through the holidays um, and then I set it aside to get on with some other things, but um, it is all but finished. I just need to um, join it together block it or maybe I'll block it and then join it together block it in the needles and then join it together because um, I'm going to decide whether I want to do a three needle bind off or a kitchener I actually think I'm going to go with a three needle bind off number one it's easier number two it gives you a nice finish um, the kitchener gives you an invisible finish but not so much when you're doing color work because I don't know how to and I don't think you can kitchener in color work 
I remember trying it before. And I think you just end up having to Kitchener in one color. Anyway, I'll be figuring that out soon and bringing it to you. So what else do I want to talk about? Oh, I haven't even got to the big news. The big news is that the woolly thistle is moving. <laughs> And I'm really, really excited about it. Um, we are bursting at the seams here. Over November and December, we were actually working in the hallways um, and we couldn't have enough people here to get through the work quickly because of COVID, we had to limit how many people were in the space and the space was small, so we couldn't, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I've been looking for a new location. Um, ideally a shop front would be great, but I, that's not happening. We can't afford uh, the rent that, is, um, that it costs to have a shop front. And also they're really small premises that are available right now. Um, and for me to have a big enough premises that, <laughs> that I need, I can't afford it. So uh, we are moving to a tiny little industrial estate near the West Lebanon airport and there is a little warehouse that is vacant and is clean and they are painting it for us. They're building a wall that we needed building and uh, cleaning all the fans and the air conditioning and everything. And it's more than twice the size that we have here. And it's gonna be the girliest girly warehouse <laughs> <laughs> there ever was and I'm really really excited and so is the team we are all looking forward to being able to have a space where we work and we're not falling over each other inventory will have its space and you know customer service will have its space I'll have a space it'll all be really good and uh, we'll stay there while we are growing into it um, when I first saw it I thought oh yes you know we'll have loads of room to grow here course now that I've uh, done the deed I'm thinking oh we might film this already actually so we haven't moved in yet obviously we're still here but we will be moving soon and we'll be in touch about that and letting you know how that affects um, our turnaround for the week that we move and, and stuff like that but it's very exciting news um, we will welcome people who arrive at the West Lebanon airport. You're welcome to come and visit <laughs> if you come in on the plane, <laughs> it's right next door. But uh, no, I'm kidding. It's going to be the same setup as we have now, which is online. And um, we can still do local pickup for you and things like that. So yeah, we are moving. We're gonna have a girly warehouse. Um, it's gonna be really, 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 uh, I think we'll all sigh big breath of uh, relief because it's just going to be more room for us and it's affordable because it's at the airport it's not glamorous it's not a beautiful shop front but it is um, inside once you get inside um, it's going to be a very fun place to work if you're local and you're looking for some part-time work we are always looking for good folks to come join us at the Woolly Thistle uh, specifically packing orders. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with us uh, and let us know that you'd be interested in working at the Woolly Thistle over there at the airport, um, you can email us at info at thewoollythistle.com and just say um, something about employment in the subject line and we will get back to you. So yeah, it's all moving and shaking here. It's really, really good. And we have a lot to move. It's going to be quite the job. We have now been here at the River Mill, which has been a great home to us for two years. We moved here two years ago in January. So it took us two years to actually, you know, just run out of space here. So that's fantastic. And we will be making our home up at the airport for a good long while to come, I think. Um, but uh, I am always looking for the perfect shop front place that the Woolly Thistle could have its own flagship store. That is a dream of mine. It will come true. I just have to be patient and maybe, maybe you do too, I don't know. But um, yeah, I think that, you know, that's a very positive and exciting move for us. So bear with us while we get through that move. It'll be happening at the end of January. So any minute, basically. Something else is coming up that I need to tell you about is our color work accessory cowl. Um, this is sort of morphed from our mitten cowl that we have been doing for five years or so. And the color work accessory cowl is an expansion of the mitten cowl, meaning that we are offering um, cowls, socks, mittens, hats, gloves, 
scarves, any accessory that you want to knit has to be all over color work. Stranded knitting, maybe intarsia, but most of you do uh, stranded knitting. And so that you can knit anything that you want. So yeah, it's going to be a really fun cowl. We're making it very welcoming to you, whether you want to knit a hat, mittens, or a cowl or something like that. We are hoping to have lots of kits available for you in plenty of time uh, for starting the cowl. So if you're interested in buying a kit of the, um, the woolly thistle cowl or anything else, uh, then, you know, hopefully we'll have those in time for you. So so, you know, watch, be on our email newsletter because that's where we'll tell you first when things are going to be available uh, as they come up. Um, but, you know, hit all our usual places and see what's going on. But the email list gets first, first notice and also gets the specific time that things are going on sale. So that's a good little insider tip right there. I have not named this behemoth of a cowl yet. I mean, cowl yet. And I think that should be... Um, on our, I think that should be the theme of the uh, comments that you leave on this episode is can you come up with a lovely name for my cowl and um, whoever uh, suggests the name that I really like will be the winner of a $25 gift certificate. So I think that would be a fun way to go and that saves some of my creative brains <laughs> for getting that thing finished instead of wondering what I should call it. So let's get on with the shop update portion of this because oh my gosh I've missed you and have blithered on for far too long about all the things. I hope hope you're still with us. So in the shop right now we are looking at lots of new things just coming in today. So we have the wonderful Devonia tops from John Arben textiles back with us in six shades. Let me find them all here. So these are 100 gram bags of Devonia, which is um, which is a worsted pre prepared, you know, tops is a worsted prepared fiber. And Devonia uh, features all the wool uh, from Devon. So you've got, you know, Exmoor, Blueface, and there's, I think there's some Wensleydale in there because this has got some nice drape to it. So that's off the top of my head. I will put here the contents of the Devonia. Um, but this is literally like spinning with butter. <laughs> I can take it on good authority. Maggie has been spinning up some of uh, the Devonia and she really loves it. And also it's a really nice, easy spin. So very enjoyable. My favorite, Broken Flower. And look at, look at the colors that go into that. The pinks and the oranges and the cream and the darker pinks. So having that flowing through your fingers is just lovely. And we are waiting for the Devonia 4-ply. The pre-made yarn is coming too, but we haven't got that yet. Uh, we'll let you know when that's in. Also going in the shop today, I have been looking for where I can get this book for a long time. And I finally figured it out. So we have the top-down sweater or the handy book of top-down sweaters that I've talked about many, many times regarding the vanilla sweater. Um, so you can use this book. It's full of charts and sizes. And if you understand the book, then you can knit any sweater of your own devising that you would like. And I thought that I should, I thought a long time ago I needed to get this in, but I couldn't find where to, where to get it. But this is going in the shop today. So if you would like a copy of this, that will be available. Stock overall is fairly low at the moment while we are recovering from Black Friday and the holidays. Um, so we are working hard to restock everything, but COVID and supply chain issues are also causing us some delay. So bear with us. If we don't have it, we're working on it and we will get it. Um, and you can always uh, click the back in stock uh, notify me link on any of the product pages. Uh, because that tells us that you're waiting for something and we can um, make sure we're getting it in. By Hand 14 just went uh, live on January 10th and so all our pre-orders went out. We do have more stock uh, 
in the shop and if it's out we are getting more uh, we find that we're selling a lot of copies of this one my guess would be because it's uh, Hudson Valley which is the Rhinebeck area and we all go to Rhinebeck when we can and it's really nice to see what else is out there while you're visiting an area that you wouldn't normally be in so I think that's one of the reasons it's very popular the other reason is that it's just a lovely lovely book I always really look forward to um, them releasing their latest issue and it's almost you know it's a travel magazine based around our love of knitting and fiber and textiles and some baking as well and things like that you know where the good bakeries are you know so anyway so that's in that's live now if you place an order you will get your copy right away um so long as we have it in stock and we're working on keeping that in stock um i've mentioned before that by hand doesn't tend to do a lot of reprinting so you've got to get it when it's new because once the print is done that's it it's done they don't tend to they don't tend to reprint anything we also have Ready Set Raglan, uh, which is an excellent book for knitting raglan sweaters and designing your own sweaters. Um, and yes, if you were nervous about knitting the vanilla sweater, for example, this might be a very good primer for you to learn how to do that. Uh, of course, the raglan part is the shaping of the body and sleeve join, and that's what makes it a raglan. This is not a raglan because there's no seam here. This is called a yoked sweater for those of you who are new to sweater knitting. See, there's the seam there. So this is the raglan and they have lots of lovely, um, oh, it looks so fluffy, that's the cover picture one. So that's a ribbed raglan. Oh, I love that color. Yeah, that's knitted in reverse stockinette. It's all the bump side on the outside and so this will be sort of a class I think in how to knit a raglan sweater as well as the numbers you need to to do it just so it fits correctly that that is very pretty those are my colors right there <laughs> yeah so we have plenty of these in stock right now friends in food has been selling well this is a little toty book but it's quite thick yeah, so this is Friends in Food, and I have my copy ready for when I can invite people to my house. And it's basically like a little workbook. And you can ask your friends to fill in this little questionnaire. And what, quite a bit of this book is this questionnaire. So, you know, uh, basically questions like, do you prefer sparkling or still water? Do you prefer red or white, rosé, or anything else with bubbles when you drink wine? Um, what do you always get a second, second helping of or what you don't like to eat? So you can sort of take this survey of your friends before dinner comes around and that will help you plan the most beautiful dinner that everybody's going to enjoy. There are some lovely photos in the back there. And there's also different styles of meals that you can eat together, you know, whether it's brunch or a dinner. So this is a lovely handy little dandy book from Lina and it was actually uh, created by Pia Alapateri. Friends in food. Yeah. So this is a nice little little thing. Um, I feel like it is friends in food, not just in the fact that you're eating together with friends, but this is a friend helping you um, host a really successful get together which gives me, you know, anxiety. <laughs> that sort of thing makes me nervous. I'm not a great cook, or I am actually, I'm not a bad cook, but you know, the planning of, of a meal and stuff is quite challenging, especially, oh, here I go. But you know, day after day after day after day, I've always having to eat and feed and eat and feed. <laughs> this is different. And so this is actually something that you could look forward to doing. And we could be making plans for when, you know, we're finally able to get together in person Again, I think that's why that's so important to me, actually. It's sort of a beacon of, of hope that we will be together again. Okay, what else do we have for you that's just in? Uh, Strange Brew is back in, and that is another book that is really educational in sweater knitting, uh, but it's for yoke sweater knitting. So that's great, it comes from Tin Can Knits, so you know it covers all sizes from teeny tiny baby all the way to you know your giant man um, and everything in between. So that's a really good book. 
and what else shetland wool adventures journal right here we have our last order of that i don't think we're able to get more so if you're on the fence and you want it go ahead and get it now um, because i think once they're done they're done this is volume one very excited for volume two what she's been working on um you know if you read her story she pulled that that whole volume together very quickly it was it was at a time when uh, COVID struck and she was she was doing this is Misha Hayes she was doing um you know traveling and hosted guide tours around Shetland and of course her business died overnight with COVID um and so she put her publishing and editorial skills to good use and came up with the Shetland Wool Adventures journal it's brilliant it's a wonderful publication full of really good things and covers a variety of topics that are really interesting to us knitters you know obviously there's knitting patterns and woolly bits in there but you know there's all the other things like where to go for a good walk and you know look at all the different beaches and yeah and and different crafts that happen there on Shetland so it's a it's a really it's a worthwhile buy um what else do we have we do have um Shetland Wool Week annual so here's 2020 we're ordering more if these are sold out and we're also back ordering um, the previous years as well. So those will be in soon if we don't have them right now. Scandinavian Sweaters is an excellent colorwork sweater book from Christ, uh, Kristen Wolita. I know I'm saying her name wrong. I apologize. Um, beautiful designs and I will definitely be planning a knit from that book in the near future. Uh, that book uses quite a bit of Rama Fennel Garn too, which is handy dandy. And Farewell Weekend, of course, which we still have some copies of here after it's launched. And um, the book, the um, pattern in here, well, there's so many. This is one of my favorites. Very traditional colors, lovely wee cowl uh, in traditional Farewell colors. Where is the Boo Nest Tam? Ah. This here, knitted in Jameson and Smith. We will have kits for that as soon as we can get those colors, hopefully in time for our cow. So if you're wanting to knit the Boo Nest Tam, we are hoping to have color, uh, hoping to have kits for that. And we do have the Pharaoh weekend book right here. That would be a nice little gift to yourself. And then you could knit it with the cow. And out of here, we hope to have Jameson and Smith kits of the Radiant Cowl designed by Ella Gordon. Oh, this is lovely. Vibrant colors, just what you need on a gray winter's day. So we hope to have kits for that too, um, in time for knitting along in the cowl. Nordic Knits is also here. We have a few of those in stock right now. Um, thank you so much for all your patience waiting for those to come in. I think that might be the longest ever we had to wait for something and we've had to wait for something. So thank you. You guys were great. Um, we take it as a sign that you really trust us with your uh, pre-orders and you know nobody complained. It was wonderful. So thank you for that. We do try to keep you up to date so that you know what's happening and you're always welcome to change your mind if the wait is too long for you. But really, um, not even a handful of people did that. So thank you very much. Much appreciated. Right, uh, let me tell you about yarn that we have this new. First of all, this one in the shop last week. And I want to show it to you because we are going to try and get more. <gasps> oh, I just calmed down. <laughs> Does that happen with you? First of all, these colors. Second of all, the texture of this yarn. So of course, this is from Uist Wool. This is their newest four ply yarn and it's called Lass. This is Giel, which means sparkle or white. Oh no, last means sparkle. There is no sparkle in it, but I think the wool sort of sparkles. Look at that. Can you see? To me, this, I feel like this is a pebbly texture. It's not too tightly spun, but it's not very loosely spun. And this is the cream color gorgeous oatmeal color. I tried to keep some of this for myself so that I can knit with it soon. 
can see that it, it's squishy. Now, I am not a sensitive soul, so uh, this is not in any way itchy or off-putting for me to have next to skin, but I know some of you will ask. That is such a subjective question. I think if you're in doubt, you know, you like a yarn, but you don't know if you're going to tolerate it, what you need to do is buy a skein of it, knit up a nice swatch, stick it in your bra strap, and see, and wear it all day, and see if you forget about it. If you forget about it, you're good to go. And you can put it on, you know, different places. You can tuck it in your waistband and see how it feels, you know, near your waist. Um, or, you know, tuck it up a sleeve and see how it feels against your arm, wherever you think you're sensitive. Uh, that's just lovely. This is an oatmeal color and it's called Corka. Corrine and Corka go together. <laughs> and then lastly is glass, which is their gray. It's very smooshy. And of course, so Uist wool is on the island of North Uist in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. This is as authentic a yarn as you're going to find anywhere. All of the yarns from Uist wool are extremely authentic. They come from sheep around Scotland and quite often right off of Uist where they are located. They're a small mill that is a community funded um, endeavor. And I think it was uh, created to give back to the island and give jobs and things like that. And I feel very lucky to be able to stock some of their yarn. This went in last Friday and sold out and had quite a lot. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can get more so that more of you can try this out. But this is lovely. This is lovely four ply. Um, so that's out of stock as I speak, but you know, we could be getting that back in. If I do, I'll let you know in the newsletter when it goes on sale. And then um, also here from the wonderful people at US Wool, I have their DK. I have three grays and a dark. So this is Foran. This is a DK weight. Very lovely. You would knit this on a five to seven, US five through seven. Um, this means spring or stream. It's got Texel, Swartlas and other mixed breeds in there. Really nice. Lighter in color is Sith. I'm not a Gaelic speaker, so I know that I'm saying these wrong, but Sith, and that means peace. And it's a lighter gray as I showed you. And same size needles. Lovely. Sweater in this would last forever. And cyan is a darker gray here. Oh, I didn't tell you what this has in it. Let's see. Cheviot, which is a Scottish breed, and Swartlez. And this has Warblaze and Cheviot. Same yarns, but darker. And, you know, it's got little lips in it. Of... So a little bit tweedy, even, this one. Really nice. So let me show you those three greys. So Sith is the lightest, Furan is a medium, and Cyan is the darkest of the three really nice together. And then my favorite is their Hebridean. Comma. That's just the tie. So comma is this dark chocolate Hebridean coming from the Hebridean island of Uist. very special. I love a dark yarn. I really do love these dark browns. I love it. I don't mind knitting with them. You know, I think some people are afraid to knit with dark wool because they can't see, you know, what they're doing. But you know, if you have a good light, you're fine. Yeah. 
really nice. So we do have those. Well, at the time of recording, there's still some available. Maybe a sweater, sweater quantity in each is still available, but maybe not by the time you're seeing this. But we are working to get more. When we get the, fing the fingering weight, we'll get more of that too, hopefully. Oh, here's my cart. Sorry about this. But I wanted to show you too, Lopi. Uh, this is their lace weight, Einband. And I have it just in three colors. And we'll be having that in the shop starting today. So if you have any interest, there is a shawl that used these three colors and I'll put that right here as a little um, inspiration for you. Um, the picture of that shawl has a bright line green. I don't have anything like that, but this will get you a lovely natural shawl. So that's going in the shop today, and that's a departure for us. We don't typically have lace white in, in Lopi. Uh, Lopi is having supply issues right now, and um, <laughs> we're not able to get very much of it at all. We have our orders in, we're waiting patiently, but um, yeah, we're having a bit of a difficult time getting what we need from them, but it will come. And uh, also we'll be getting more and should maybe have it in uh, today for you. So if you're watching this, go check out Garthanor Organic Sock Yarn in the Snowdonia page. So their sock yarn is called Snowdonia. We love Garthanor here. It's organic yarn. It's all natural. But this is brand new for them. So this is their sock yarn. It's called Snowdonia. It's a worsted spun. So you can see how smooth, and there's a sheen on that. The, all their um, Snowdonia yarn is made with, oh, well, not all of it. So this is 100% Romney. All of them have Romney in them, but this is 100% Romney. So it's worsted spun, which will be more hard wearing than a woolen spun sock. You wouldn't want to knit socks out of woolen spun yarn. I tried once. I tried once to knit um, socks out of Jameson Smith. Big mistake. Big mistake. Don't do it. Um, and then let's see where, yes. So this is Romney and Hebridean. 75% Romney, 25% Hebridean. So it's so interesting that that dark brown mixed with cream gives you gray. I always think that's like magic. So again, worsted spun, all natural, no nylon, no polyamide nothing this is a hundred percent wool and there's i want to say about 12 different colors so this one here is toman let me show you the other grays uh this is trifan this one here is 60 percent uh, romney and 40 percent hebridean so you're getting the darker gray with the the heavier um hebridean content and this one here is glass glasslin 90% Romney, 10% Hebridean. Isn't this fun to see the different percentages of uh, sheep breed and how it changes the color? And here's yet another gray, which is 50-50 uh, Romney and Hebridean, and this is Tegged. So, and you can see the sheen on these. These are not typically, well, you know, Romney is actually quite a long, staple uh, yarn so that's what gives it its strength but it's also giving it that sheen I think all natural okay so Tegid, Trifan, Toman and Glasslin those are the greys then we've got um, and I don't have all the colors because we sold out of some but I'm showing you everything I do have in the shop at time of recording so then we have Marl's which are just fantastic. These are still sock yarns again. This one is Harlech and it's 80% Romney, 20% Hebridean. And Idris is 62.5% Romney and 37.5% Hebridean. They're like sock monkeys. Um, this is Idwal. This is very nice. I love this one, 50-50 Romney and Hebridean. My God, that almost looks like one of those shells. Doesn't it? I don't know what they're called. I've seen a shell that looks really like that. Anywho, 
<gasps> I'll be knitting socks for these for sure. This is Mole Hibbug and it's 95% Romney and 5% Hebridean. So it's like cream and light gray marled together. Um, and then we've got this nice subtle marl called Gwinder, no, Glindwar, Glindwar. I think this is Welsh. I do not speak Welsh. 25% Romney and 75% Hebridean. So any of these, you'd need two to make a pair of socks typically, two of these to make a pair of socks. Um, and you can mix and match them. So you could, uh, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing the, the Hebridean sock yarn, the dark brown that's sold out. But let's see, you could go with, um, together, you could go with gray and marl together, heels and toes, you know, any of them, they all go together. They're all natural. Nature's bounty right there. And I just wanted to show you that we also have number one and number two in stock in all the different yarns. So number one is their lace weight. This happens to be Manx Muret, quite a rare uh, yarn and breed. This lovely color, warm. And we have number two, which is their, this one here is Croft. I think that's a Shetland, nope, Ronald C. Oh my gosh, I love Ronald C. Ronald C. From the island of Ronald C in the Orkneys of Scotland. This is their number two weight. Um, if this was in their lace weight, it would be much, it would be a single ply to start with and much thinner. I do like Ronald C wool though. That's, that's an area that I want to explore more myself. And then this Manx, um, Manx Murat is really nice too. So that's number one and that's number two. So lace weight and fingering. You can use two of these to make a fingering. Okay, so that's what we've got um, either here or coming from Garth and Orr and Uist Wool. Very exciting. Those particular um, providers or, or producers of yarn are very minimally processed, close to the sheep, um, small businesses over there in the UK doing wonderful things uh, for their community and for, you know, looking after the sheep and the world with, um, with Garth and Orr being organic as they are. Also, it's worth mentioning that when you order from the Woolly Thistle, you are doing your bit for the environment because I'm bringing over big, uh, big packages all at once, rather than lots of little ones coming over individually all the time. Um, so for whatever that's worth, I've, I've often thought that, that, you know, we're doing our bit by bringing it over in bulk and then distributing it once it's here. We have these lovely little rope bowls that are handmade. And these just come in the shop and they're perfect for holding your stitch markers or, you know, keep your scissors, little scissors, stitch markers and uh, seam rippers and all your little bits and bobs can go right in there. So we have those in right now. The vanilla sweater, um, the pattern was released and we sent it out to everybody who had ever purchased the original one size vanilla sweater pattern or who had received it when they bought yarn when we first introduced it back in April and May of last year. So if you ever got it from us in the first place, hopefully you received your update. It was free and we're happy to give that to you. We hope that you will find joy in knitting the perfect size of vanilla sweater for you. Um, and it is now available as um, an item on the shop that you can buy. Um, so you, you can get your sized vanilla sweater pattern right off the shop and we are putting together kits um, the pattern is in nine sizes um, and so we've broken the kits down uh, I think into four different size groups it's all explained on the kit page and we're doing the top 11 colors um, and that's what you'll be able to get in kit form we can't do anything like we did before because they're each time there's a color there's four different sizes inside that and it becomes too big for for the system to manage so we decided on the top 11 colors which are the colors you all love anyway because they're the ones that we sold the most of 
Um, and if you buy it as a kit, you get the tote bag and the pattern and the yarn in your size that you need. So by the time you're seeing this, I think that will be up in the shop. We were just waiting for more yarn to come in. Um, all of us that are trying to bring yarn over from uh, elsewhere are having logistical issues. And it, I think it's just an indication of how long this is going on and how difficult it is. Um, but we are all trying really hard to keep the um, supply chain open and going and, um, and available to you knitters because I for one know I need my knitting through this time as I have gone on and on about already. Um, what else do we have? Little Grey Sheep Minis are going in the shop today, sets of four. Um, those are always popular. If you're interested in that, hop on there because they will be selling very quickly, I'm sure. Um, but you might be lucky and still have a few to choose from. And of course, I mentioned the Devonia Tops. Those will be in the shop today too. And because we're moving, we have some stuff that we want to not move. So we are coming up with a few um, excite, exciting things for you that, that will be announced more in the newsletter. I have a few um, Turn Studios uh, yarn bowls and I sold these for quite a while. And these are what I would term as seconds because say it's got that crack in it that um, I didn't sell it, but I'd be happy to sell this at a discount. So we'll have these on discount you know if you don't want to use it as a yarn bowl because of that crack it makes a cracking bowl uh, on your knitting table I have one of these with lots of stuff in it and I don't use it as a yarn bowl um, but I wanted to take the chance to show you the sorts of things um, that we have here so there again it's a crack but it's on the outside um, this is one of the large bowls and it's beautiful inside though. Wait, there is a wee crack there. So, you know, the worry with that is that it's gonna catch your knitting, but actually this, I don't think it would. But I didn't want to sell it as is, um, but we will be putting a discount on these. So I wanted to show these to you today so you know what you're getting, the sorts of things that, um, yeah. So these cracks are coming from knots in the wood, which is a natural, part of the of the tree um so depending on your feeling about that this could actually be beautiful because it's the tree and it's it's all how that tree was put together this is another large bowl this is a medium bowl a couple more this here is lovely this is a medium bowl very smooth there. It's got this interesting chunk there, but it's perfect on the inside. Tiny little thing there, but nothing, nothing that would catch your yarn. So these will be priced accordingly. And if you're in the market for this, then that's good. And then this is the medium as well. And this one, it's just the coloring really. It's this sort of dark piece here and a bit green, but that's just the natural wood again. That's just coloring there. There's nothing itchy, scratchy, catchy in there. These are beautiful bowls uh, made by hand. So I just have these five left that we will be selling off at discount as part of our moving sale, I think. Right, um, uh, just a quick word that we have our um, flagship colors back in stock. My favorite colors, obvi. Um, so if you're in the market for some nail polish, then there's that. And we do have other colors as well, but those are our flagship and they were out of stock for a little bit, I think. So I think that's all I have for you this time. I think that's more than enough uh, chin wagon from me. But I really uh, do enjoy being with you. It's great to be back. We're back on schedule, uh, hopefully, so long as the move goes well. And, you know, keep in touch with us through Instagram and our newsletter. I'm sure we'll be posting all kinds of moving photos um, on Instagram. When we moved in here, we actually had a huge snowstorm and the moving truck went off the road. So, you know, I don't know why we 
end up moving over the winter but that's just what we're doing we're tough nuts here and we can do that we'll make it happen but uh yeah keep in touch uh keep an eye out for what we're up to with with the move and everything and just take good care of yourself if you go out wear a mask and take your knitting talk to you soon bye bye for now